Hello everybody, this is Mario Cabot screwing rules because I got green hair. But speaking of anime antagonists, I'd like you to meet my guest, Broly Power Maximum. Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for having me on here, Kaiba. Yeah, no problem. And I didn't know that my hotkey for recording was also another version of paste. Yeah, you find out something new every day. I have my hotkey set up to record a shift insert. I just have it as that little asterisk star button on the numpad. <sighs> well, I use that a lot, so I can't really use that for my thing unless I had OBS off all the time. I want to be honest with you, like, I never use the numpad. <laughs> Yeah. Well, don't forget, I have a history of role playing, so you have to use those for actions. Anyway, BPM, bro, Broly, bro Lee. What's up? Why don't you do a brief introduction to yourself? Well, I'm BPM underscore Broly on Twitter. Um, I've gone by BPM. Just call me that for short. In terms of being on the internet on YouTube, I played World of Warcraft under the handle Chipman. You can find my videos if you Google that. A lot of people have actually uploaded my videos for me <laughs> to get some views. Was not that good a player, was not that well known, but I was known. Um, yeah, and once I saw this Vic situation start going down, I wanted to comment. I wanted to make bring some mirth to the situation. And I did that by making a whole bunch of memes, and then I had a, a microphone and a platform to voice my opinions, and a few people liked hearing them, apparently. So, yeah. Well, we all know everybody watches Couch Crows, not for Dean and Andrew. <laughs> That's right, it's all about the champ! That and Aura. Oh, yeah. Oh, the the champ and the champ's ultimate buddy. Yep. The the champ! So yeah, just trying to figure out where my channel's going from here. Um, it's been a few months break. I think it's going to be a couple more. Maybe even half a year. But I do intend to make some kind of content in the future. Just well, nothing along the lines that I've made. I'm surprised you're not going to start live streaming Dauntless. <laughs> Yeah, no, actually, surprisingly, really good game for anybody watching this. I suggest you download it. It's on the Epic Games. It's the only Epic Games game that I have. It's also you know? free to play and cross-platform, so you could be like me on PS4 and play with Broly here, who's on PC. Yeah, it has high replay value, which is something that I really appreciate from a game, especially a free-to-play game. Now, you can pay money to buy a little bit of power, kind of, but you don't even need it, and you can reach the end game without ever paying a cent if you want to. But then there's a bunch of cosmetic crap that you can get. So I really suggest downloading Dauntless. Do yourself a favor. You won't regret it. Even if you play for a few days, you'll have a lot of fun. Yep. I've had fun playing it, though. I have other games. Yeah, me too. I've got a level 60 Shadow Priest on World of Warcraft. I... If I start making content again, that's probably where it's going to come from first. So you're going to be playing a game that supports a communist initiative. <laughs> Wait, a game from a company that supports a communist initiative. Yeah, so here's the thing. I go way back with Blizzard. I mean, so I'm in my lower 30s, we'll just put it that way. And when I was a little itty-bitty broly... <laughs> Way back when, I was playing this game called The Lost Vikings. Now, a lot of people don't even have a clue what that is, but it was one of the earlier Blizzard games before StarCraft, before Diablo, you know. But I played those too. I've probably dropped two years of my life and slash played, sadly, in various Blizzard games. A lot of that being WoW, but 
they've made good games and up until recently i think i i've never been a big person in overwatch or hearthstone or some of those games i like the more kind of role playing element strategy. ones in real time yeah yeah so if anybody out there likes playing starcraft hit me up and uh i'll kick your <laughs> you know what you can just kick their ace i'll kick their ace <sighs> Yeah, dude, I told you it's okay to cuss, just don't use racial slurs. Yeah, but, you know, so I don't hate them enough for what they've done. A lot of a lot of the news that's coming out, that's coming out from the decisions of a few people on top. They're trying to get into that Chinese market, which I don't blame them for, but I do blame them for selling out. A lot of the people that made the company great have stepped down at this point, which is very unfortunate. I think... The fiasco with last year's BlizzCon, where the guy came up and asked, is this some kind of out-of-season April Fool's joke when they announced Diablo Immortal? You know, I can't help but wonder if there's going to be some kind of shenanigans going on this year. Yeah, that's what people we'll thought about Bethesda the when they announced Fall 76. Oh. Was this an early April Fool's joke? I know online only fallout with no NPCs yeah I mean we all built these computers up to play these games from these companies that we've supported and made them I mean we've helped make them who they are the people that have made the companies what they are have been the leadership and all the grunts to just do the hard work you know all the programming all the things that people take for granted and you know sad a lot of those people have either been fired or you know just as the company changes its identity and apparently its values yep well I don't blame them for trying to get in the Chinese market to the fact that PC gaming's always been huge over there oh yeah yeah I I'm pretty sure Dota has been humongous over there and I'm, I'm not sure what are the games but there's a ton of money that's untapped for them and just for the market in general, so I, I understand that they're hungry for it. It's it's transparent that they're hungry for it, though. And I can give you a fun fact about Sega in China. Fire away. Okay, back in the 90s when China would not allow video game consoles to be imported, Sega found a way to circumvent that to make money. They went through a Chinese distributor and put the Sonic games on CD-ROMs. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm gonna keep playing World of Warcraft. I'm not gonna throw up... <laughs> I'm not gonna toss my subscription and be like, yada yada, Hong Kong, and all that stuff. Like, it's stupid what they're doing, but it, at this point, even with the, like... The stupid things they've been doing with like banning the okay <laughs> symbol and stuff. It's <laughs> they're trying to get virtue points. Is basically you know because they want the money. Well, they that, forget I one thing: that. the super jack wagons are the kind that don't give money. The Tumblr yeah. crowd. Yep, it's gonna. If they keep doing this, it's gonna come back to them. Because if they keep on setting some kind of bogus standard, eventually they're not going to have any freedom as a company anymore. Well, I think the whole thing is stupid. Mainly, Blizzard should not have tried to end that dude for brownie points of the Chinese because that offends the other crowd of trying to appease the super jack wagons. And they shouldn't have handled it the way they did, too. Like, if they had some kind of rule that that person broke, and there's some kind of clause that says, we can, we can ban you if you do this, maybe it even exists, but it wasn't, it wasn't properly identified if it does exist. I mean, I'm sure they withhold the right to ban anyone at any time at <laughs> some level, but yeah, just, just the way that they handled that situation was so bad even making the statement that they did which ran contrary to their other statement on the Chinese um, 
was it the Twitter or was it just their Babylon Quibo or, or Kibo, some kind of Chinese version of Twitter. Yeah, which is like we will protect the uh, the pride and dignity of China. So it they've made a mess of this situation themselves that they created. And they, and they probably did not know that do listeners was, knew about Kibo. <laughs> Yeah, and apparently, I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently the post they made saying this had nothing to do with China or whatever, <laughs> we were not influenced by China, apparently it came from a day ahead of U.S. time, which would mean that they <laughs> the post didn't come from the States. So if that's true, that would be interesting. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if they want to take all their business to China, they can. Yeah, so I've anticipated a lot of games coming out from them. I I played the hell out of Diablo 2, I played the hell out of StarCraft 1, Brood War. And so when Diablo 3 came out, I was really excited about that. And I played it a lot off and on. It's not a game that you can just continually play, I, though some people do because they have they're getting money <laughs> for their streamer like their audience or whatever and they can't just like swap games. So some people do do that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not a really good game to do that for, especially now you can kind of touch all the end game in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then StarCraft 2, I think, is one of the best games ever. I think it's the best um, real-time strategy game I've ever played. And I still will log in and play it once in a while, but I get disappointed because I'm not as good as I used to be. I don't know what the meta is. And despite Diablo 3 being a flop, I've been anticipating Diablo 4. But anymore, I'm just kind of like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't. I should probably just not get my hopes up. Yeah, don't blame you. I actually was excited about Fallout 76, but I got let down by the whole experience. Yeah, it's... You know, and that's why I really want to support games like Dauntless that are fun and they don't try to scam you. And you it's know? the only epic game that does not have a bunch of four-year-olds screaming in chat. Yeah, I mean, you can play it completely solo, which is a huge bonus to me. You know, like playing Diablo 4 if you, or Diablo 3, if you want to play it competitively forever, at least as long as I was playing, you had to run groups and greater rifts or else you weren't getting as much paragon and what it, like paragon experience as you could be so as like a solo player you can't you couldn't really compete to get like that extra rift level or two with somebody who had like a consistent group it, so it's just kind of like it didn't just value time you had to play with a group well, I hate games that punish solo players yeah, it's either like we'll make this a group game and be that like that's the uh, that's what you advertise from the get go is that you will have to play with a group or you don't, you know, because when somebody comes in with twice as many stats as you for their damage stat, like they're going to be able to clear further with less effort. Mm hmm. I agree. So yeah, I've just been enjoying some Dauntless and WoW and. You know, shame on Blizzard for what they've done. I hope they start shaping up, but it's not the end of the world for me. Well, I don't think they're going to shape up anytime soon. Yeah, speaking of not shaping up, <laughs> so the big drama continues, I guess. Not so much anymore because the court case has temporarily been settled. I've heard that he plans to appeal. Do you know if he's actually appealing? like filed documents yet no rackets has not told us anything remember he's who all the freaking i stand with vic youtubers get their information from like that mimi did wait which one <laughs> okay you've seen that comic with the two cats where the one catches fish but's in the bucket and the other one just looks at him in the bucket and fishes out of the bucket <laughs> Yeah. Well, Nick yeah. Ada did that with himself, lab labeled the cat with his name, then labeled 
I steam a Vic content on the bucket and then label the cat fishing out of it. I steam a Vic YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about the YouTubers. They're they're widely hated by Kickfic and the voice actors and everything because they couldn't they couldn't control them. They couldn't shut them down and. This whole thing has been about hearsay, and yet they don't want people to hear the other side of the story, and they're not going to give it to them. So, you know, and then there's been opinions coming from what I would consider people who like Vic against the YouTubers, and they've been saying all this stuff about how they're milking the situation. Oh, Hero Hey, with his I Stand with Vic merch. He's, he's profiting off of another person's pain and all these people, they're just grifting and all this stuff. It's like, hey, if you are fighting for a good cause, if you're trying to protect someone or who deserves being protected or you're trying to protect a principle, which is what a lot of this is about, innocent until proven guilty. Now, if you're, if you're, bring, if you're giving accurate news while doing that, and you're actually helping someone and trying to provide for a better future for people, absolutely profit. You know, what yeah. about the people who have profited from the situation who have caused that pain? You know, I heard, I heard some video from, um, and his name keeps on coming up recently. Maybe you've heard, heard of him, Prince Vegeta. Oh, yeah, that guy. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I saw an interesting thread about him in um, Gothic Sushi. However, I too. I, because of that, I went and saw this 35-minute long video of his ranting about the Funimation voice leaks from Chris Sabat, his Okatron and 5000, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, he starts screaming yeah. about I Stand With Vic and all this stuff about Hero Hey and how they're profiting off of a man's pain, trying to pretend like he's he's not on either side but the whole time he only offers up like maybe one criticism of kickback he's like yeah i don't believe in fake swatting this doesn't even identify who did that in a 35 ish min minute video granted dude we all know he's kickback yeah it's just like well dude you're not being honest with your audience and you have a big one Maybe that's part of being a YouTuber that size, but no. And the thing is, is okay, you want to talk about Hero Hey using somebody else's image? Okay, your whole channel is about that. I mean, mine is mm -hmm. too, but I'm not making those arguments. Well, mine so whether it's about the suffering or whatnot. Well, in truth, my channel was not about using another man's image until, like, months ago. Right, but even if it was from the get-go you know <laughs> are you trying to shut down other people on that point like no so that's the only that's where i start having a problem with that and yeah, don't look at me man i'm a firm believer that we are entitled to our own opinions yes and because of that and because of the sensitivity we have this thing called my truth but it's not always the truth. You know, we've, we're all going around so afraid to offend people. And people, other people, are all going around trying to be offended. That we no longer have a concept where it's diminishing of all kinds of things. Like what a man is, or what right and wrong is. It's my truth. And that's a whole other can of worms, but... Anyways, I'll throw it back to you. If you oh, want to dude. talk about anything specific. Oh, dude, I kind of agree with this about everything you said. But in truth, I kind of disliked that Prince Vegeta dude before the sushi thing. Don't like the I've never heard of him. I don't like I'm... the third shade of other people. Okay, but he did this video with Bulma Bunny about the funny leaks where they were just laughing it off. In character, pretending like it was really Yamcha getting the sacred ointment. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the same guy who was saying, like, well, this is too much. Maybe it's not, though. Oh, it's the same what? dude, trust me. Yeah, you, you saw both videos? Not both videos, but I did see that one where he had Bulma Bunny with him. I'm pretty sure it's him who had the other one, but it could have been someone else. 
like I said, I'm not really familiar with this content. I did, from what I could tell, because I saw that one that you're talking about mm -hmm. for sure. From what I can tell, he doesn't depict Vegeta very well. <laughs> His Vegeta voice isn't all that amazing. I mean, mine isn't either, but that's not the crux of what I do. The level is not. So. Oh boy, I overloaded my mic. The level is not over nine thousand. I can't do it either. <laughs> So yeah, he's Kick Vic, and uh, his name keeps on popping up. But um, this whole "I stand with Vic, Kick Vic" thing, there's it's pretty much over. I would say, like people have identified that they're not going to get attention, they're not going to get views, and all this stuff. Like a lot of potential censoring going on on YouTube on those notes. By the way, like if you. If you make a video about that stuff, it probably won't get as many views, no matter what you make the title on the thumbnail, just because. <laughs> Dude, I'm a little late on trying to cash in on Vic, but I didn't want my channel to be about I stand with Vic or the whole argument. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when the news started coming out, anybody who reported on it frequently pretty much like if you had a following already your channel just shot up thousands and thousands of subs you know except for perfection who like bounced back and forth and here's the thing is like he didn't he just repeated news and then he gave a bunch of inaccurate information and then he kept on going on about his ego you know and we've seen that with other youtubers here and there where they just kind of get sidetracked from goals that actually matter but yeah it's been interesting well, in Perfection's defense, if he wouldn't have tried to upload his content about the situation on his other channels every time he had one banned, he probably would still be on one of the other channels. <laughs> in Perfection's offense, he's an idiot. <laughs> Dude, that's his uh, kind of knowledge. Going after a man's wife, just like all the ego and all these people with NBA and Perfection, and it's... It's it's a sad and interest. Oh, I agree. Did you see the stuff with NBA? Dude, you're cutting out. Did you see the stuff with NBA? You see the whole ordeal? Yeah, where he's threatening Nick Krakita's kids. I've seen it. I know about it because yeah. it's all over Twitter. <laughs> yeah, then he was going to be gone then he was going to be gone until 2020 and then he, he was back and just renamed all of his channels and like, copyright later. striked everyone he could and <laughs> we find out that he and Matt forged this video or not this video but make a video where they release these documents that they forged about perfection now I don't care what perfection's done short of that kind of thing. Like you just don't do that. That's as bad as anything I've seen on here on the internet like with this whole Vic situation, people coming out with their 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 truths, their stories. You know, like when you start forging documents, that's a whole another level of stupidity. Well, that's what started to get me towards I Stand With Vic was the fact that Kick Vic kept getting caught trying to forge evidence. Yeah, and I'm going to be perfectly honest. Like, NBA was always Kick Vic. Like, he tried to play it off like he was on neither side, but he's sitting there on Twitter saying, I'm not Kick Vic, I'm Fuck Vic. You know, like... I don't understand how anybody could think that dude has any redeeming qualities. There's just something about him that really pissed me off. <laughs> dude, not to be gross here, but every time I see a hashtag, I'm like, okay, they want to ride Vex D. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just like, oh, well, maybe uh, we should look into that with, <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but no, it's it's been interesting, and no proof whatsoever even now all these months all they can point to is a number it's like oh there's so many people who 
are friends with me that will say stuff. So it must be true. Dude, I could tell people that I went face to face with Loch Ness Monster in freaking <laughs> New Jersey. Yeah. I mean, if you had enough people, maybe you would get some kind of cult following like they have at Funimation. Yeah. Or any of the white knights that come after you on the internet when you go after someone else. Oh, God, I hate white knights more than anything. I hate those bastards. Yeah, I've been dealing with some, but um, <laughs> we, won't, we won't talk about that. Yeah, I've dealt with too many of those. And I hear no audio at all. You okay, bro? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm operating on push to talk. Oh, that explains Just coughing it. up a storm. Yeah, I just have a USB mic that has a mute button for when I need, need to speak. But... Not fair enough. So how about you? What about your channel? What's your plans? Do you care that much about your channel? Well, I would like to grow an audience and actually start making content people would watch. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. If you're a small-time creator, you have to do something that YouTube will push to the forefront. You know, like, you can't just put out good content and people are like, they find it, because they're not going to find it unless they specifically go and search. And even if they search, you're not going to be, like, in a top result unless your stuff is, like, being watched enough right Wait. so really and realistically unless you have something that's absolutely crazy people are like shocked about it it the only way to grow your channel is to talk about or do trending things things that are being pushed by the algorithm and it's super annoying and it kind of like limits you as to what you can kind of do growing and then it seems like there's this magical space that, like, once people hit a hundred thousand subs, their channels just explode. I don't know if the algorithm just starts suggesting their crap to people, or what, but that seems to be the magical number. They have been on and off the YouTube game for the past ten years. I know this. Yeah. No. Exactly. Like, people like the quartering. <laughs> I look at their channel several months ago. I'm like, dang. Weren't they at like 300,000 or something like that not too long ago? Mm -hmm. Or even some of the, the people who covered the Vic stuff, you know, there's some of them are starting to get close to 100,000. Yellow Flash gained several thousand subs this week, like 85,000 subs now, you know. I'm wondering if he's it, one of the ones who voted in my last poll about should I stop tagging them, being like, please do your bother. Wait, someone said that? No, that was part of the poll options and the polls I make because I tag you and a lot of people in them. <laughs> yeah, I think I actually saw that. I haven't been good at checking my Twitter notifications lately. I've just been so freaking crazy with life. Taking a day off today, but... um, Yeah, no, when I started getting into the whole Twitter thing, which was back in February... And one of my first tweets was directed at Chris Sabat. It was just like, I can't believe that you're acting this way. This is basically what I said. You know? Because I was a Dragon Ball fan. I watched that stuff growing up when it wasn't popular at school. I'll tell you that much. Like, you were oh, a I bigger nerd. You were a bigger nerd if you watched, like, uh, Pokemon or something and were big on that. But even that, people were still playing the card game at school and so much, like, they're like, you can't even bring your Pokemon cards because it's causing problems with kids selling them. and <laughs> Or stealing them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So even that was like as popular or more popular than watching Dragon Ball. But lo and behold, I that was my show. And I grew up with it. And like my old man would occasionally watch it because I, I would like watch it in the room he, his computer was in while he was doing work and he would <laughs> start watching it make he liked making fun of the flying blue cat that was his favorite but um yeah no i had a lot of a lot of good memories watching that and playing games with my friends and my brother doing things to support that company and just 
seeing the way that they've carried themselves throughout all this with their little hive mind niche clickiness where it's just like well I've known them for 20 years just like I've known other people so it must be true because I don't like the other person never stop to consider like you know maybe even my friend can lie now I can appreciate someone who's got their friends back like that you know but I feel like that back should only be protected so long as that person's giving them something to believe in. Oh, I agree, and I actually do kind of respect them for having each other's backs. Yeah. Like, I, I gotta give them that much. But with that said, that's kind of like the, the clickiness that caused this problem in the first place, because apparently they all talked about Vic. And he wasn't around. Not to mention they never thought he'd get a job as a director, which he's supposed to have done when this stuff happened. You know, it's unfathomable to me that there's not some kind of text message or something that people could misconstrue even, that they could even misconstrue something like that, that that's not out there. You know, like, I, I didn't know who any of these people but Chris and Sean were before all this. I don't really learn people's names because I just think that celebrities are a-holes by default. Yeah, the only you know PA's I mean? names I remembered before this incident were actually Sabat, Schimmel, and maybe Yuri Lunthal. Yeah, so I didn't even know who Vic was or is <laughs> like today. Like, I don't know him that well personally. I'm just somebody who's met him in person briefly, you know, in in the context that I met him in at a convention. I've seen him interact with people. Uh, I've been following any news I can get about him. But with that said, well, I've also seen him, like old videos of him, hundreds of old videos of him interacting with people. So I don't know him personally, but I don't know them personally either. But I can ask that people offer proof for what they're arguing. You know, oh, if they don't got that. proof, they shouldn't be talking about it on Twitter. Personally, I don't think they should be talking about it on Twitter at all. They should have just freaking, if he was guilty of something, kept it behind closed doors. Yeah, but they were itching. Itching to rub it in. Itching to destroy him publicly. They were, they knew it was happening. They knew it had happened. Even though it didn't involve some of them supposedly like how how would Jamie know anything about it right Monica told her while yeah, they were having a threesome on Sabat's casting couch with run toy serving <laughs> snacks <laughs> yeah like you know they're fucking talking you know and you know that these people talk shit about the fans too I can you know all it takes is to look at their twitter feeds to see what kind of people they are that they think that they can throw that out to the universe. You know, all these Trump derangement syndrome people shouting all their obscenities out at the universe, being orange man bad every other week or whatever. Yeah, I'm apolitical, like so that. I don't care if Trump's bad or not. All I care about is results. <laughs> it's No, I don't care either. It's just like I could have just turned on CNN, you know, or... <laughs> or watch some uh, YouTube clip of Antifa to see this kind of opinion. Oh boy, frickin' Antifa. <laughs> but anyways, it's, I mean, nothing against people who don't support Trump. It's just, what is that really going to accomplish? You know, let's say I didn't like the previous president, no matter who it was, or three presidents ago or something like that like what good is it going to do to go on social media every week and start ranting about it to try and get likes to try and feel like my opinions validated is that what's going on with these grown ass adults well you'd be surprised adults can be the biggest children out there no and then that's that really is the bottom line when it comes to this right when it's this whole situation when it's what I was just talking about, it's it's incredible how petty people are. You know, we're all a little bit petty. We're all 
we kind of all put ourselves first. You know, you kind of have to. But the ego and the self-inflicted victim and the self-inflicted hurt that people have and that they act on, it's, it's really sad to see. Dude, it is sad to see it these days. Makes you wish it was 20 years ago when freaking people would actually look at both sides of a story. Mm -hmm. Like when Clinton you know, got impeached. <laughs> you know, if someone could show me proof that Vic is guilty for what they accuse him of, and it's not just hugging somebody... <laughs> or a peck on the cheek or something like that if it were like an actual crime that he shouldn't have done then I would not have the stances that I have you know I've always I've always had that stance you know but until somebody does that I'm gonna stand up for the man who in this situation is the one who, I'm gonna stand up for whoever is not being stood up for so that the situation is equal. Well, common sense we talked about before, forget when, I think it was on the panel you did months back with Marco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was about the whole thing, and I we all agreed that if Kick Vic actually had actual evidence of Vic doing this stuff, we all would have changed sides a long time ago. Yeah. That's the whole thing, right? Is just, I don't want to defend some kind of creep. But at the same time, I'm not going to just pussy out because somebody, you know, might feel like I'm a rape apologist for defending some dude they have no proof against, you know? Like, that could happen to me. That could happen to my brother. That could happen to my dad. That could happen to my son. And I don't want to live in the world where somebody can just levy an accusation and ruin somebody forever without any proof whatsoever you know because this stuff happens now people have they have identified the power in it and because of the little gimps out there who have given it's not even the women the people who have given these feminists that kind of power now we live in a world where that's the reality and I'm gonna I'm gonna fight that until I die well, dude, I used to actually be a male feminist, but that was back when it was about equality, not this whole Me Too movement. Um, I don't know, man. Looking at looking at feminism as a whole, it just I'm not sure that men have more rights than women. You know, compared to how many rights women have that men don't. You know, like anything that. If you're talking about like kids, uh, a woman can take a man, <laughs> we'll put it that way, and then like against his will, and then she can sue him for child support. That's the kind of rights that men don't have, for instance. Of course not. And you want to? I wonder who goes to jail more, women or men? Is it because men are inherently evil? I don't think so, dude. I don't think so. Uh, we think can be pretty suck. evil, but... Women can be evil, too. I'm a firm believer in gender equality. Yeah. And we live in a world now where... What is a gender? It's just something that we decide, and then... Or, moreover, what is a man? So what is the world telling us a man should be? A man should conform to all the, the male stereotypes or the, the, the man roles like oh you're supposed <laughs> to take out the trash you're supposed to provide for the family you're supposed to be tough and not cry and all this stuff but at the same time you're supposed to also conform to you're not supposed to hold the woman accountable to anything that like they would normally conform to while you're being held to that standard yeah, it reminds me of this freaking story I found on Facebook months back about this feminist who should be losing her feminist card because she called up her boyfriend when her car had a flat and when he said, why don't you change it yourself? She's like, but you're the man. No, exactly. 
If I open this pickle jar, no. I, th I thought you said women are just as strong as men. You open a pickle jar. Oh, wait, what? You need 6,000 pounds of lumber moved? I guess it's a good thing you're equally physically strong as men, because that's definitely true. In yeah. average, mm -hmm. you know, case by case scenario, <laughs> you know, it's just the things that society is trying to push on us right now. It's stupid. It has nothing to do with science, which it, uh, as someone who grew up as like a more of a Christian <laughs> kind of background, having people tell me like science this, science that, you know, it's just like okay, where's why aren't we talking about science now? Dude. Uh, it, it's interesting. You want to know about religious background being an awkward territory? Try being a brony on Tumblr who's Christian. Yeah. I won't, but... um. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, okay, I'm not going to force my beliefs on you, but could you please not down my religion because of a few idiots? But you Christians are evil. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I mean, Christians is at least in the U.S. they get a bad rap now. It's like, don't don't push your religion on me, but I'm gonna make it so you lose your job if you misgender me. You know, kind of like, like keep keep this off my body. It's like okay, well. kind of like the Mickey Parker story. <laughs> Say what? Okay, there's this freaking super jack wagon. Forget what state it was in. Who saw this old man wearing a MAGA hat, started cursing him out, being like, aren't you ashamed of yourself? All this stuff, calling him an uh, N-word that rhymes with Yahtzee. Right. Uh-huh. And guess what was underneath that MAGA hat? <laughs> he was Jewish or something? Yeah, it was a yarmulke. Yeah. No, I mean... <laughs> it's a yarmulke, dude. You see, you see people using all these buzzwords when they talk about Ben Shapiro... <laughs> but yeah, what I was laughing at is she's the one who ended up losing her job and being hated I'm by society. Surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised. You know, like usually people get to just say things if their politics align, but um Well, she aligned her politics the wrong time. Yeah. <laughs> because she should have looked at the MAGA Starbucks. hat before calling him a yeah. See. Was it in the Starbucks? Because if it's a not in the Starbucks, your, your chances of getting away with it go down. It was a Starbucks, <laughs> dude. Oh, oh wow! I was super impressed. Yep. <laughs> That's the reason why I love that story because here we are, the super jack wagon, doing all the stuff, threatening to get this dude fired from his job, and turns out he was a Hebrew, so. She had the tables turned on her. People were going after her on Facebook. Like she was trying to go after him. And she was fired from her own job. And like we do not... The boss saying we do not support... This stuff. Music is for all. Because she worked at a music store. You know, I, I actually vaguely remember hearing about this. And it's one of the few times I've heard about it. And... Yeah, I mean, good for people. There's there's pushback in the other direction. You know, it's like, how do you confront a mob formed on Twitter in an instant on stuff like this? I mean, I don't really know the solution to that. Like, it's not like businesses have adapted quickly enough or the law has adapted quickly enough. You know, someone can throw a tweet out there and get millions of interactions in a couple hours. And cause real damage. I know, it's a sad world. Yeah. You know, love the internet. More power at the, our fingertips than ever. Even on the go. You can get more information quicker, you know, for, for knowledge's sake. If I want to know some random fact. Or more practically for me, if I want to look up some kind of like example for code for a program that I'm unsure of there's the internet you know but it also exacerbates it it increases the potency of problems that we already had in society as well 
So it's kind of like uh, I don't I don't want to say it's a necessary evil, but it's basically a necessary evil. Yep. So I mean, it'll be interesting looking back <laughs> when we're old and gray and. And well, I don't know, my early thirties like... already got gray in my beard. <laughs> well, I mean, really gray, really old, or just semi old. But um, it'll be interesting, you know, because the world has changed so much so quickly. And back when I was a kid, things like cell phones, they barely even existed. They looked like bricks, and you'd have to have like this big, massive charging station island thing in your car to have one as you roamed around and before that they didn't even exist when I was a little kid now people take it for granted like that that is a new technology to Dude. have not only a cell phone that you can call people on but a com your cell phone is a computer <laughs> dude I remember when I was a kid like when I was little they had those bricks but they eventually switched to those flip phones mm-hmm but I remember thinking those were so cool. They were, man. Like, let's be honest, like, the technology didn't exist before that. That's why they were cool. Uh, nowadays, you have these freaking kids in, like, elementary school demanding a new cell phone. And all I could think is, <laughs> back in our day, you didn't have cell phones that everybody could have. Those things were ex more expensive than they are today. Yeah, it's uh, a tough world for a parent right now. Like... Even if you don't give your kid electronics, they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna use their friends electronics. And is it even good to withhold them if that's where the future is is using technology, so Oh, I already got plans for when my kid wants their own video game console. <laughs> I'll be like, Okay, it's, I'll pull uh, out my NES and Mario Brothers and be like, If you can beat this game, I'll get you a PlayStation ten or whatever's gonna be out. <laughs> Just to see... Are you trying to uh, train them to beat me at StarCraft? No, the whole point of the exercise is for them, who's going to be used to like games you can save your status anytime you want, being a game that you can't save at all. Yeah. Uh, one thing that my, uh, my aunt did was she and my uncle would buy their kids a toy every time that they would read some kind of like academic book and do the problems in it. I thought mm -hmm. that was really intelligent you know and if my kid's gonna get technology anyways eventually maybe I'll come up with solutions like that but we'll just have to see well, it's, it's hard to know how it's gonna how it's going to affect them because it's so new well my little plan is well, more about getting them to appreciate it if I ever get one for them yeah, that <laughs> let them go through the same hardships I did as a kid, so they learn to appreciate their toys, and not break them. Yeah, our our generation barely appreciates anything. Let's be honest. So I don't know how much the next gens are gonna appreciate anything. Well, I've been around older people yeah, most of my so life. so has this and that, and why don't I have one? It's just like, of course. Yeah, I'm just gonna tell my kids we're poor. <laughs> The future has been decided. But why don't we got this 50 inch TV in every room? We're poor. Why don't we got the PlayStation yeah. 10? We're poor. Yeah, plus nobody needs that, right? Like, I don't. <laughs> it's just a, a commodity that's kind of convenient and fun. But, yeah, I mean, going back to the Vic stuff, so. It started about hearsay. It's still on hearsay levels. I feel like many more people believe he's innocent than guilty, which is great for him going forward. The fact that he lost this first portion of the court case is not good for him. You know, if he if he could have won at least something in this, he could take that when a convention is considering him. And be like, hey, like, yeah, people have said these things about me, but look, I've sued these people and I won on this topic. You know, because well, a lot of conventions, they don't care. <laughs> Let's be honest, like, they don't, they didn't really believe or they didn't really care, but they don't want to touch this person that's radioactive. So I feel like he really kind of needed that win and he did not get that. 
And a lot um, of people are upset for various reasons. Like they want to, they want to attach blame, and I understand that. But they're trying to blame you know, Ty. They're trying to blame Nick. They're trying to blame Chup, which is more justifiable. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just, and I I get that. I don't blame them for wanting to wanting people to be responsible. And Ty said he's responsible. Um. Of well, course, we've heard a bunch of criticisms about Chup, but dude, I looked with into said, it. In the Chup, and I've known that he had bad reviews. Yeah, he had some, but I mean, how many cases has he handled to get a limited list of re bad reviews? So I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But what about that dumbass who, or any dumbass who contacted him at all, like? Sorry, guys, if you're a dumbass who listen, who's listening to this. I was horrified. Shop, but okay, man, <laughs> but I was you're a dumbass. I was genuinely horrified that people did that. And that's when the three who had video out when that happened. Yeah, and all I can like, say it, is, dude, don't attack Chup. It's not going to help Vic's cause at all. Not even, like, attack. Like, don't even talk to him. Don't interact with him whatsoever. You know, it's not like the voice actors. This guy, he's making a choice that nobody else can really influence at the end of the day. And if you piss him off, you know, that's not going to help. That's not going to help Vic. And it didn't, right? Because then he started talking about healing a community he knows nothing about. Like he was Monica Rial herself. Uh, so I really feel like between stuff like that, maybe some stuff that happened with Ty, like, Whatever, whatever it it happened, but at the end of the day, Vic is at a better place now than he was back in February, even losing the case because he still has support, right? So, for people who are distancing themselves from the situation because you know it, you have to pay the bills. <laughs> Let's be honest, you have to either pay the bills or you've lost interest in arguing about it. There's nobody left to argue. Dude, I'm hoping that Vic opens his own recording studio. Oh yeah, that would be awesome. But yeah, I mean, don't don't stop supporting Vic. You know, if he's coming to a convention close to you, like go go see him. Or if he's not, you know, call up call up the convention, <laughs> not repeatedly, but be like, hey, you know, contact them and be like, hey, I I would really like to come to your convention if you could bring this. Could you please bring this guest? I would really like to see them. Trust me, Akron Comic comes like on the freaking third of November, and if I would have realized this stuff sooner, I would have been trying to get them to get Vic. Yeah, exactly. And anything that he dips his hands into, like um, what's it called, Fantasy Soft. I actually mm -hmm. need to talk to them. You know, once they get going, if not now, support them. You know, I know people are. The, it's new. I think Chuck is actually the CEO of that, Chuck Huber. I'm going to have to look into that. But yeah, Fantasy Soft um, actually contacted me in the past to do reviews for him. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, and kind yeah, of I, had I a freaking argument with the dude who wrote about the light novels. Well, the first one, because there's a lot of points that as a novelist I could not stand. Well, I'm I'm kind of waiting for the anime. Oh, to, uh, it means gonna kick ass, just, man. The one with, you know, actually Vic in it and Todd, I think maybe. Todd's in there. It, it isn't Todd like another one of the the princes or something like that? So, I think so, but anything yeah. he dips his hands into, you know, go support that. You guys are the ones who make these companies their money over the years. You guys and people like me bought the video games that they voice act. And it's, it's, you know, you have a lot of, a lot more power than you think. Mm -hmm. And that is the best way that you can help Vic. You, it's not some court case that you had no influence over unless you were a dumbass, like we talked about. And it's not some, you know, it's not a Twitter battle, social media battle, it's not or a numbers court. battle, except for money. So, 
you know, if you have the opportunity, support him in that way. And I understand that people, they're moving on in a way from the, the, you know, dialogue from the situation in general. But that's just something I, I want to say going out myself. You know, I was, I'm still looking forward to the news. Any, any interaction I get on Twitter is going to be from people that um, came from this I Stand With Vic or Kate Vic thing. <laughs> that's where that's what I made my account for and that's what I interacted with people about and now it's just kind of like eh. so yeah no um, okay, I'll throw it back dude. to you well I agree with a lot of what you said and personally I miss being neutral like I was in the beginning yeah however I think Chup actually did a good thing by dismissing the charges because Vic could get it done in a higher court. Yeah, so, I mean, all we can do is keep our fingers crossed. I know a lot of people were really upset when the news came. Um, Even Chup knew of... that this could be appealed. That's the reason why he did, tried to warn them. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, I... I kind of had a gut feeling each time that it was just going to be bad. <laughs> and so I was kind of mentally prepared for it too. So when the news came, yeah, of course I wasn't happy about it. You know, it's not going to hit me like it hits someone like Vic. But um, well, all we can do guys, is have faith that Vic will bounce back. Yeah, and be the bounce, like be be the bounce, because. You know, unless he wins this thing, what what what's holding him up? So, I understand people. They've got tired of it. They've burnt out. Like they feel like they needed something to believe in to keep on supporting. But you, beautiful people, watching this, you're the ones that even made Vic fighting back in the first place possible. So, you're the ones that can support him still. We don't need to talk about it every day or ever again. <laughs> but there's still a man out there who's been wronged. From everything I can tell, still waiting for the proof. And uh, I think we should support him. So that's I all agree. I have to say about that topic. Well, I'd get into another one, but we're already 57 minutes in. I boomered it. <laughs> we both Sorry. boomered it. <laughs> Sorry, hey, yeah, I, kinda, I rambled a lot, but I, I haven't really talked about much lately, so I have a lot of... Well, you needed a platform to ramble on, so I gave you one. There it's you my go. fault. I'm the boomer. <laughs> you should have known better. Yeah, I should have. Speaking, next week I'm going to try to get DA Tox on, because I promised him a long time ago he'd be the third guest. All right. I'm going to go get him. Make, bring him on six times in a row. Dude, I'm gonna have all the couch crews on before I get on the couch crews. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's okay though, because I brought you on my thing. I know, man. I know. I just had to state that. Which me and Marco <laughs> are waiting to do the reshoot interview with him until after we both been on. Cause we're supposed to be on the same show, according to Dean. Yeah, you should probably talk to him and figure that out. Well, we we'll actually... interview him. Or when we do next week's Digimon panel, because apparently we're doing another one. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm yeah, sorry sure that my mod, Azirio, kind of blocked you for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was funny. I was watching that. You guys mentioned Matt, and all I could think about was Grumpig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know you were but. thinking of a different Matt, but anyway, it was good to have you on. <laughs> Everybody like Yeah, thanks for having me. Subscribe, share this video. This is Mario Kaiba screwing the rules cuz I have green hair and hanging out with Broly Power Maximum. Peace. Later.